Welcome to the Network Engineering Video Blog. I am your host, Michael Crane. Okay, so uh, in this video, we're going to be adding a link between our routers. So if you remember in the previous video, um, I showed you how to add these uh, routers. They're actually uh, WPF controls in the code, um, but we have a have them as our routers. But the one thing we didn't have was we weren't able to create a link. And in this video, we're gonna do that. We're gonna add our link in between our routers. And you would think that'd be pretty simple adding a link be between this. It's just a matter of drawing a line between these two uh, nodes right here, these two routers. But if you think about it, first you have to tell WPF which two points you want to draw a line to, the start and end point, right? And you also <laughs> have to, um, uh, you know, and that means finding the coordinates of the routers and, and that sort of stuff. Let's just go ahead and add a link. We'll, we'll take a look at it, all right? So I'm going to add a link. I'm going to go from router zero to router one, all right? And there it is, all right? Don't think I, yeah, I didn't implement the edit or delete yet, no. Nope. Um, Another thing, so, and that's, that's fine and dandy. It looks pretty good, right? Um, but another thing is, is, is you want the link to be able to follow the route around if you move it, right? And I know it's not any kind of real-time graphics animation, but, but it's a start, right? And, uh, and especially if this has got a bunch of links on it, you probably don't want to try updating all the links <laughs> in real time. It's probably be kind of CPU intensive, but I don't know. We'll, we'll give it a shot later. That'll be in a future video. But anyway, so this is what we're going to do today is we're going to add our, our router link. Okay. Okay. Where to start? <laughs> that's, that's a good question. Um, so let's look at the GUI. I'm going to go ahead and fire up the GUI so we can look at it real quick. Okay. So in the past previous video, we were able to draw these two routers. And when we drew a link, it just kind of popped up a line over here in the corner. And now you know, we can add a link between our two routers. So, you know, what I had to do to create this is um, I created a class called uh, link.xaml. I can go take a look at that. And uh, move him off to the side over here. All right. And that this this um, file wasn't in this in the last uh, video, so this is new. There's nothing to diff it with, in other words. And um, and this is the way you create any other user controlled like I showed you in the last video. I did change the default uh, layout from grid to canvas, and um, I'm just drawing a line, and uh, and it's uh, it's a shapes object. You can see it's system windows shapes line. And I named it, and I, uh, I stroked it, and gave it a thickness, and and gave it coordinates. This is um, x1, y1 is your left side coordinate, if you will, and x2, y2 are your right side coordinates. And it doesn't have to be that way; it's just the way I have it set up. And then I added a uh, context menu, so when you right click on the line, like I showed you earlier or on the link, I should say, uh, you get the menu, right? Oop. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, you have to be real good about pointing to right-click on that line. We, we might have to fix that later, but that's in the future. So, anyway, this is the, the new file and uh, that for the link. And I don't think I... Oh, yeah, I did add some code, some uh, code behind, whatever you want to call it, some implementation code. Um... I I added a uh, couple pub or about four public properties. Um, it just basically says what type of link it is. Right now, it's just set to link. It's got an index that I give it to keep track of it, and it's got originating node and terminating node. And I just call them node A and node B. And this is just a standard um, uh, constructor right there. It's nothing special. Here's the, um, the constructor where you just pat. This is the one we're going to use mainly. 
Yeah, you just uh, say, uh, you know, new um, line with, uh, or new link with A and B nodes, right? And you notice everything's generic. There's a reason, the reason I'm doing that is, you know, we're, we don't want to make a, a link class for every <laughs> router and, and switch there is in a network. We, it would be a mess. So we need to make a base or a parent node object that has, you know, basic stuff. And so anyway, I'm keeping everything generic and then it draws a link. Okay, and then I put a little comment in here. What it's doing is first it's going to get the location of each node. It's actually in the router. Um, this this function right here is actually in the router class. We'll get to that later. And then what he's going to do is he's going to update um, this uh, these canvas uh, coordinates. Let's see, where is it? Um, link XML. Yeah, I'm sorry, the line coordinates on the canvas. And uh, he's going to just update X1, X2, Y1, and Y2 with the um, the coordinates passed back to him from get location, right? And he's just going to dump out the uh, what he's done. You can kind of see that right here. Okay. Okay, so since we're <laughs> looking at File, new files that we added. Let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, the other the other thing we had to add was this uh, this link editor uh, class, and this is that menu that you saw when I was adding the link. And you know, let's see, we can look at the uh, the code behind. And this is just an uh, oh, by the way, yeah. So this is. This is not a control. This is actually a, a separate window, okay? <laughs> and this this actually, I had to scratch my head with this one for a while because I was like, well, let's see, you know, do you you come in here and you do, you, uh, you know, I'm kind of like, so you do an add and a new item and you, you want to do WPF and, you know, our goal is to do WPF all the time. So you got... You know, you have a window or a page, a user control, or some of this other stuff. And I was like, well, gosh, you know, I, I, I just want a, a menu. <laughs> and I want a pop-up dialog box, right? And you know, so there's no dialog box in here, right? And I believe Windows Forms, yeah, so, so you used to have a dialog box, all right? And... And that's not there anymore, so I was kind of scratching my head going, well, so if we go over here to uh, Windows Forms and Controls Equivalent, right? And I was like, okay, so what's the equivalent for a dialog box? And um, <laughs> as you can see, there is, there's doesn't even list it. So, so that was kind of not very helpful. So I uh, I did some poking around and... And I found this right here. So this is in the Windows Presentation Foundation Application Development. And it's like, basically, how do you do a dialog box in WPF? So, <laughs> so you, can, you can read this. I'll, if I remember, I'll put the link for this up in... Um, uh, under the video and the notes, but uh, you can just Google dialog boxes for WPF and probably you'll find this immediately. So anyway, I, I just followed this right here and, and you know, and people that do Windows Forms programming every day might, might be yelling at me, well, this is pretty simple. I, I didn't remember it. It's been years since I've done any forms programming, but anyway, um, the goal is, with a dialog box, uh, let me start this. As you probably know, is um, is you want it to basically, oops, see, oh, that's actually a perfect example. You see how the, it won't let me do anything until I finish adding this link. And so it, it locks it up and, and this way, if I, if I actually kill this program, 
it will kill this dialog box. And and usually with a when you're creating a window, this is a this is a root object. It actually is a separate program. You can spawn a completely separate program. That way, if I killed uh, the Mogwai, you know, canvas or main form, it, this thing would still be running. And and I didn't want that. So so the key to um, making the main program wait is you make the main program uh, the owner. Let me see if I can find it down here in this example. It might be easier just to show you <laughs> in the code. Yeah, here it is, right here. So it says dialog owner equals me. So in the main window right here, so this is add link. Okay, so you can see that I uh, instantiate a, a link editor object, right, from the link editor class. And then I assign the link editor to basically the main window, right? And, uh, and then I just show the dialog. And then I, I wait for the, uh, the return value, all right? So, <laughs> gosh, I don't know. Should I go ahead and finish <laughs> looking at, we can looking at, look at this real quick? Uh, well, we'll come back to this. Um, all right, so where were we? we were at the the link editor. So, so we pull up this dialog, and and this is the XML for it. Uh, it is a window, right? But it is being pulled up from the main window as a dialog box, which which gives it a dependency on the main window. So anyway, we can look at the. Uh, this is the layout of it. It's it's pretty simple. It just just a box. It has a couple list boxes in it looks list box in it and a okay and cancel button and the code behind for that is is uh, pretty simple it um it populates the uh the list items with the node names that's what you saw earlier when it said router one router two and i'll show you where this collection nodes is at here in a minute and um the cancel doesn't really do anything it just says a dialog sets a dialog result to false all right this uh, OK, it, it first it checks to see if it's valid. There's a function down here. It verifies is that that you have selected two endpoints. And here's the uh, the message box that it pull, pulls up saying you must collect two uh, endpoints. And it's a, and so it returns false or true. And it says if it's not valid, uh, then just return. Or if it's valid, then it comes down and dumps this um, debug message and sets the dialog result to true, right? So the last file we added was this uh, module globals. And, and this is a dumping ground for me to put stuff that I want all classes to have access to. And so I just call it a globals, mod globals. And you can't call it globals because there's already a class called globals. Uh, and Visual Basic. So, I'll look at this guy real quick. And there's just two things in them. It's both my collections. It's a collection for nodes and a collection for links. And you can see this is generic, and that's on purpose for in the future when we make a, uh, a parent class for our Cisco routers and switches and stuff like that. Um, they'll basically be categorized as a node. So, right? Okay. That was very interesting. Let's see. What else? So, okay. So that's all the files that, that we added. All the new files. Let's go look at the files I changed. Uh, we'll just start from the top here. Cisco router node. Window on the left here is the um, original. Window on the right or the, is the new, new one or the changes. And uh, we'll just go down and, and look at them real quick. It's kind of like doing a code review, if you've ever done that. <laughs> uh, okay. So you can see um, I did a little reformatting of the use of, the, of this a little bit to make it easier for me to read. I did add this, uh, this mouse, uh, mouse up uh, subroutine in, in the code behind. And I also added this canvas left and canvas top. And, and I'll show you that here in a, in a second. 
Well, I might show it to you now because I think that's all the changes in the in the uh, XAML file. So yeah, so let's go look at the uh, the code behind for it. Okay, there's a boatload of changes in this one. So we'll just um. <laughs> Wow, I guess we'll just start from the top and work our way down. So here's the uh, the old class um, at mouse location, porn origin, and translation point. Uh, I have changed this, and uh, I'm no longer using translate transforms. I'll show you that here in a minute. I did add a couple public properties in this class right here. One is to tell it it's a router, and that's... Um, also thinking ahead towards the future when so when I create a Cisco router node in the future it's going to pull up a generic node you know it's going to inherit the properties from the generic node so we'll have to know what type of node it is and it's going to be a router index is just to keep track of it on the canvas well these just got moved around a little bit here's mouse location and point origin I didn't think I added those they just got moved around a little bit and I also added this Boolean, it is moved, and we'll look at why that's there in a minute. I did, um, I just commented out this uh, trans point as translate transform. I left it in there, so and if people want to use that, instead of the new way I did it, they all they have to do is comment it out and comment uh, the new stuff I put in here out. Okay, hope that makes sense. I uh, added a initialization to point origin. Yeah, it looks like I just removed this, um, this this copy constructor here because I don't know. We can add it back later. I guess I guess if you wanted to, you could that probably work okay. I mean, it, it, what it's for is if you go like add router, right? And you got this router, you right click on it, and you can say copy, right? And it just it can copy everything in here and make a duplicate of itself. And I guess that might be okay if it initializes a whole bunch of other properties inside there in the future, but we'll add that back in the future if we need it. I, I just removed it for right now. Um, I did add this new function that I showed you earlier, this get location. Uh, I basically just, let, let's, get, let's get back to this. I'll show you this in a second. Uh, let's see. We'll keep going down. Uh, send command. Let's see. Oh, I added a delete node. Uh, or I worked on the delete node. I I don't think it works. Gosh, I actually don't remember. I, I don't think it does. Um, let's delete. Nope. No, it doesn't work. And the reason why is I'm going to have to... Uh, I believe they call it bubble up an event to the main window to tell it to remove it from the main window. And uh, yeah, we'll go over this when we we do that. That'll we'll have to do another video on on bubbling up events uh, up and down the uh, the tree. <laughs> I forget what it's called. Okay, so I uh, commented out all this translate transform stuff. So if you remember. In in the previous video, I told you it took me a long time to figure out how to do how to move this this router around, right? I was or this node around, drag it around and in different parts of the canvas. The problem came when I was trying to do this this uh, get location thing, and as you can see, I started uh, doing some code and and mucking around with it a little bit and and uh so this kind of sent me poking around and you know i started to put this together and this would probably work um you know this is what i kind of figured out right i was like eh. but i i really didn't like it when i was doing this originally which got me to uh writing this uh this uh translate transfer translate transform code in the first place was let me see if I can find it here. It is um so you go to um, router. All right, and click on this guy. So you go to layout. Oh, okay. So it, it's already set. So to see this top 
Left, okay, so it says Gitzer sets a value that represents the distance between the left side of, the, of an element and the left side of its parent canvas. And I had actually looked at that originally. But let's look at, let's look at the link. I don't think I've initialized that. Yeah, let's go look at, I don't know if this is going to be the same or not. Yeah, yeah, see, here we go. So... And I was originally looking at this, it had, it had these things set to auto. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? And so I, I assumed that I, it was automatically being updated from somewhere. <laughs> and, and that's what sent me down the path of doing this, these, uh, this translate transform stuff. Yeah, so that's what sent me down the path of doing this, uh, this translate transform and and I, I left all that original code in here because, like I said, it, it would probably, it would work. You could make it work. But I didn't like having to, to get the middle of it, you actually had to call this render transform operation, create a point using the, the X, Y coordinates, and then, then you had to go through and then, you know, calculate the middle and all this other fun stuff. And, and it was just, it just was ugly. I, I didn't like it. I, I was like, yeah, this doesn't look right. And as I was, when I was trying to figure out how to get the, the center of my node without using the width and height or the, the, uh, the height and the, and the left, which is basically the top left corner, which is zero, zero or X, Y. Um, I ran across Someone saying, "Well, yeah, you just kind of initialize the uh, the top left to whatever value you want, and then that auto thing just goes away." I'm not sure what auto does. I I've yet to figure that out. So yeah, so when I uh, I put that in the XAML and I just initialize it to 1010, so I just kind of moves it off the uh, corner of the canvas a little bit, and then when I want to move, I say uh, you know canvas you know get the left left and top and calculate the middle point let's go back into our diff here so yeah so i just commented out all this translate transform stuff it's basically the same if you look at it it's i just set the the top left to uh the difference of uh the mouse location minus the point origin which is exactly what i did here and i also set this uh is move boolean and we'll get to that here in a second. And then, yeah, so this last part is a new subroutine. It's called the, on the mouse up event. And it, uh, we can, you can just read it. It says, if the node has been moved, we need to redraw the links, right? And we're gonna have to clean this up. This, I just threw this in there real quick. And you know, it says, if moved, if is moved equals true, basically. Um, and it just redraws all the links in the collection of links, which is not a problem if you only have one or two links, but you know, you start getting a bunch of links and that could be a, you know, that could take some time. So this needs to be cleaned up, but we'll make it more efficient in the future. So uh, last thing is the main window. Shouldn't be too many changes in here. That's um, the only thing I changed is I added this comment. Um, and let's see, are we done with our, I think that's the, that was only diff in there, so let's go look at the code behind. Uh, oh, I did add some code in here. Okay. So when I do this canvas children add, which is the same as right here in the old code, it actually returns the index value um, on the canvas, and it's unique. So um, so I just used it as the uh, the node index, so I can keep track of it. And I also used it in the name of the router. I just called it router underscore index number. So I, I give the router a unique name. And uh, I don't know, did we look at that property in the router node? I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, no, that's right. Because name is actually a built-in property for a control. So I'll just type it in here somewhere. So we do uh, UC control, oops, UC node dot, 
Okay, so this is the user, con UC stands for user control. And you come down here and, ooh, where are we? Name, 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 here we go, name. Yeah, so it's built into the, ah, that's what I was looking for, framework element. And it's just an identifying element for this uh, user control, right? Uh, let's see here. Um, back to what we were doing. So, yeah, so I'm just giving it a name. I display the name of the router in the, uh, ad, in the link editor. This Z index right here is... Oh, I should have kept that thing running. So this Z index right here... Uh, this Z index right here, that's um, when I first added this link, right? It was, it was actually on top of the router. And the reason why is because you have to provision the routers or add the routers um, before you, uh, you add the link, right? Because otherwise it won't know where to draw the link to. And if I move this thing, you can see now the router is on top of that that line that line actually is drawn all the way to the middle of the router here and that's that's a z index it's just it's just moving the router node to the top of the pile so to speak so then it's just going to put it on top of the the link which has a z index of zero which is default all right and then i add the router our new router that we instantiated right here uh, to the uh, collection and and I am searching I search through the if I need to get the router's name or find the router I just I use the name of the router right okay and that's a searchable key in the collection and a debug statement and then yep added more debug stuff okay so there's a bunch of changes in ad link. Yeah, so this is what I was saying earlier. So originally I was just, um, from the main window, I was just kind of drawing, drawing this line real quick. But, you know, that's not really in the uh, true model view controller uh, architecture. Anyway, so, yeah, so to keep with the, the, the spirit of the WPF and the MVC model, I took this out and I created the the uh, the link class that I showed you earlier. So I removed this old code and added this, and we can look at it real quick. It's just got a local variable index. Um, here's our new link editor that I showed you earlier. And uh, I set the owner to the main window. I did a show dialog, and it says, uh, if not dialog editor dialog result, then return. If, it re if the dialog result is false, so if we come from the link editor, uh, let me, where's the code behind here? If you hit cancel, you get the dialog result is false, or um, well, I guess that's it. Because if it's not valid, it's going to just return the user back to the dialog. So yeah, so if you hit cancel, or if you X out, actually. X out is the same thing as cancel. So anyway, if he gets... Um, yeah, so what he's saying, if um, if the dialog result from the link editor is false, then then just skip all this other code because there's nothing to do, right? Okay. But if it returns true, then he's going to continue on. He's going to go get the A node and the B load node from the selected items in the, uh, the link editor uh, GUI. And then he's, and, and this is just getting the names, right? And then he's going to go get the objects um, by the name. So he's going to go get both the nodes. He's just going to create a new link and pass in the A and B node, which we looked at earlier in the link class, right? And he's going to put that new link on the canvas, store that index value, and he's going to give it a name. Or a link index properly, I mean, and a name. Okay? And then he's going to add the link to his collection and, and pass the name in as its searchable key. Well, that, my friends, is it. I, uh, I hope all this is making sense and I'm not going too fast. I, I know I kind of bounce all over. But anyway, if you have any questions or comments, 
Uh, leave them in the, the comments under the video. I'll try to answer them the best I can. I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a big thumbs up. That helps. And hit the subscribe button. That really helps. And I'll see you next time.